What's going on YouTube? Welcome to episode 55 of the USS Cerritos tutorial. I'm Zero Elite and I just want to thank you very much for tuning in today's episode. And if you haven't, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button and helping me and supporting the channel. I can't thank you enough for that. <clears throat> Today we got um, about a 26 minute video. We're actually going to be working on the transporter room. Pretty excited about this. Um, I'm actually really happy with how this room ultimately comes out. Um, we're going to be using um, a reference of uh, the next gen, uh, the USS Enterprise D next generation uh, transporter room. I had gone on Google, and I just um, I couldn't find any uh, pictures of the transporter room on, of the Cerritos. If they showed it, I apologize, but I, I could not for the life of me find a single screenshot of it. And uh, from what I recall, uh, I don't think they, they used Transporter Room at all in Season 1. But it's not honestly a big deal because uh, the next-gen uh, Transporter Room uh, from the, of the Enterprise, uh, I think it's going to look pretty good on the Cerritos. Um, so without further ado, we're going to hop right into this. I'm going to adjust my screen here just a little bit. Uh, we're going to leave that picture up so I can use it as a reference. We're going to go down our main hallway to go in the engineering. We're going to make our first left. And then we're going to go almost all the way down. We're going to stop right here. You can see I've already pre-cut away my door. And um, it's going to take a little bit of finagling to get this right. Because um, basically what we're going to have to do here is... Uh, place this down so that we have enough room not only to build the transporter pad but we need to also build the back piece and everything going around so placement on this thing is going to be key um, so it's going to take just a little bit of trial and <clears throat> excuse me trial and error to get this right um, but we'll get there uh, so we're just going to mess around with this just for a little bit um, while I'm working on this, uh, I've had some people ask me on things that I'm planning on doing in the future of, on the Cerritos. We're going to get into that in a moment. I'm just going to throw down a couple more lights here uh, to lighten up the room a little bit until we get more permanent lighting fixtures in. But uh, So uh, I wanted to take a moment to talk about what my current plans are for the remainder of uh, the, the tutorial for the USS Cerritos. Um, I haven't been getting any new requests. And um, I kind of I'm getting the feeling that I, I think that um, we've kind of built everything that we need to build on the Cerritos. Um, so I'm not going to be taking. Uh, I can honestly say with today's episode, I'm no longer taking requests on uh, rooms that you want to see added on the ship. Uh, the only way, uh, once I'm done with the tutorial, that I'm going to be coming back to the Cerritos is if they have something in season or season two or the uh, next uh, seasons in the future of Lower Decks that they show a room on the Cerritos that's too good to pass up. But there's still stuff left for me to do, uh, content that I have already recorded. Uh, we've got the cargo room still to come, and we have also have um, Shuttlecraft, which I had people ask for. Uh, those are 100%. Uh, they've already been completed. <coughs> Now, I've got two other things on the list, but I've got them as maybes. Uh, and that's going to be the medical bay and the lounge. Basically, where I'm at on that is the shape that I have to work with, with the empty space that I have, it's not going to match up with how those rooms need to look because I actually have screenshots of them. So basically, what I'm going to have to do is pretty much take giant liberties with it and almost makes and make something that's not going to look very uh, similar to it because a lot of the room that I'm going to have uh, at this point is pretty much shaped just like the room that we're in right now. No matter where we go, we're in, pretty much this is what we're going to be working with. Now on other ships, this wouldn't be a problem because we could just you know use the space where we ended up putting engineering. But since engineering on the Cerritos is in the saucer, it kind of messes everything up. Um, there could have been one or two things that maybe I could have done beforehand to fix this. Namely, I think if I made the ship just a little bit bigger and I spaced out my um, corridors, the circular ones, a little bit better, I don't think it would have been a problem. But this is one of the things when you're building ships from scratch that you could run into this. Um, I really do want to try to get the medical bay and lounge done because I think it'll be a cop-out if I don't. Um, 
So I'm going to be working on those this week, and uh, I'm going to try to get those done to include them in the tutorial. Um, actually, no, I am going to include them. So pretty much what's going to happen with that is, and I'm going to make that decision now, that uh, I am going to do a medical bay, and I'm also going to do the lounge, but they may not um, look a lot like how they look on the show, just for the reasons I named before. Um, but once we get through uh, the stuff that I've just named off, we're going to call this one done. And uh, from there, I'm going to be focusing my attention on the Enterprise D and trying to get the outside of the ship done. So this way I can start up that tutorial. Um, I think more than likely it's going to be a certainty at this point that there's going to be a slight gap in between episodes of the Cerritos and Enterprise D. I'm going to try to keep it at a week. But... Um, I could honestly, at this point, I could foresee it maybe going out to two weeks, um, but I'm going to try my hardest not to let it go any further than that. So I would expect at this point, after uh, this is going to be the last week of uh, building on the Cerritos, I think we're 100% going to wrap up with episodes this week on it. Um, so I probably won't have any episodes on uh, Minecraft next week. Hopefully, the following week on Tuesday, I'll, we'll be able to start um, Enterprise D. If it's not next week, it'll be the following week. But definitely keep an eye out on my YouTube channel. Uh, I know I didn't get a Starship Evo build out this week, but I just I wasn't home on Monday and I just couldn't get home in time to get it out. But uh, I promise next week on Monday I will 100% have that Starship Evo build out. This has been a little bit crazy right now because between work and everything, I'm trying to balance that and also my YouTube channel and get this stuff out um, and also do anything else that I need to do with life. And uh, I just don't have as much time on my hands anymore. So I'm trying to, to, to finagle to make it all work. I One thing I don't want to do, because I've had people ask me, why don't you just start the tutorial series on Enterprise D? And the main reason for that is that it's just not done on the outside yet. And uh, I really want to stick to my guns on that one. That This way, when we start it, I have completed the outside of the ship. I can take a screenshot of it. This way, you know the ship that you click on in the thumbnail is the one that you're going to be building and not a variation of it. Um, another reason I want to do that is just so I have enough content to fall back on. So for whatever reason, if I get stuck on anything while I'm working on the interior, um, I have breathing room uh, to build that out and get it done. Um, anybody that does a YouTube channel, uh, I highly recommend that. Build up your content because it'll really help you in the long run. <clears throat> I've done that on all my tutorials so far. I'll just build away before I start them out because if you try to do them while you're going, then you got to get on every single day and record. Um, and that could be taxing at times. And the way that I've been doing it, I've got the convenience of I can I get on whenever I'm available to and I just do a big recording session. Um, and I'll make sure sometimes I'll get on for like a couple of weeks, a couple of uh, months at a time and just build away like I've been doing right now with Enterprise D. I've been still, I've been getting on every single day I've been building um, since I've been talking about it. Uh, and I honestly, I haven't really had a chance to really take that much of a break on it um, just because I've been trying to get the outside of it done. But that's, uh, it's going to be a challenging build for sure. Um, for anybody that's new to Minecraft, I would honestly say build the mock Enterprise D before attempting to build the full scale one because that's uh, definitely not going to be a beginner ship. Uh, that was, the Enterprise D was challenging even for me to do. I had some issues uh, on the neck and then uh, the saucer, or not the saucer, uh, pretty much the neck and the deflector dish were the hardest parts on that ship to do. But I'm really happy with how they came out. It's not 100% perfect. I'd say it's like 98%, 98.5, and I'm happy with that. Um and I think uh, you all will be too. It looks just like the Enterprise D, so I mean, you can't really beat that. But anyway, I want to talk more about the Cerritos. Enterprise D will come. Right now, we're just getting in our floor detailing. Trying to make this look as close as we can to the pad. And the picture to the right. The one variation I'm going to have from mine to the uh, picture is that I believe that these are these uh, bars here. I believe they're green. Pretty sure that's a thing. Um, I thought about doing that, but then I was like, eh, I don't know. You're, this some, that's just something that you're not going to see on the Cerritos. So I decided just to make them uh, the white color. And I think that it looks perfectly fine. Um, I'm going to be throwing down the daylight sensors here. 
now this is what I did for my other uh, transporter rooms. And it doesn't look bad, but I noticed something um, as I was going through with this that if I throw those down, it's not going to reflect the next generation transporter pad. It's going to be more of a throwback to the older transporter pads that I've done in the past. If you look at that uh, picture to the right, it's completely flat. Now you can see kind of like a faint circle underneath, but that whole surface there is flat. It looks more advanced, way more advanced than how the transporter pads looked in uh, Kirk's era and, you know, TOS and the movies and all that. So we're going to be swapping those out, and uh, I think we're going to replace them with um, white quartz, and it's going to look really good. But <clears throat> I think that, all things considered, transporter room is going to look, uh, it's already looking great, but I think it's going to look really good. Now this is something that we can do. To make it look a little bit closer, we can swap out the white concrete for gray. That could be appropriate. Mixes it up just a little bit so this way the back wall isn't matching for the rest of the walls in the room. And it still gives that darker color, kind of like what we're seeing here. We won't be able to do these uh, stripe panels going across in Minecraft. But I think having the yellow with the gray will be a nice reference to what we're seeing right here. The transition between the two. This is actually almost a spot-on identical design to the other transporter rooms I've done. But all I've really done here is I've just made a couple of minor tweaks to it and I changed the color palette. That's what I'm planning on doing with the circular corridors on the Enterprise D. Uh, and that was a mistake I made with the Serratos, but I mentioned that when I was doing the uh, the uh, circular corridors that this was mostly an experiment to see if I can do something different. Um, but I think ultimately what I'm going to end up doing after building or trying to build next generation era corridors is that I'm just going to build the best design that I've come up with so far, which is the shape that I made for uh, the circular corridors for the Disco Era Enterprise and also the Enterprise A, and I'm just going to change the color palette on them to try to make them match next generation. I think it'll work fine, because hear me out, if you go in the Enterprise D, it has corridors that look exactly like the ones on the Enterprise A, just a different color. And they did that to save money, but we can use that to our advantage, and that's where you can get away with saying, well, you know what, that's kind of how it looks, so why not? Um, so that's kind of just where I'm at on it. So that's what I'm ult ultimately going to do because I'm not a fan of how the corridors came out. Uh, the straightaway corridors on the Stratos look fantastic. I love them. But the circular ones, uh, they kind of look like doo-doo. I'm not really uh, happy with how they came out. And uh, if you want to start working on that now, if you go um, on my YouTube channel, just pull up my video on uh, Federation Corridors for Beginners. Um, I show you how to build uh, that specific design. Um, it's got the color palette, I think, for the Disco Era Enterprise, but you can just change the color um, to make it match uh, next gen. But that's what I'm going to be doing for the Enterprise D, and I think it'll look really good. Um, we'll still we're going to use the straightaway corridors from the Serratos, slightly tweaking them uh, to make them match the color of the Enterprise D, uh, how they were, but um, yeah, so you can see I'm already thinking of how uh, some of these rooms are going to work out for the Enterprise D. Um, especially since we're pretty much at the, the end of the road on the Serratos. This has been a fun build. I've really actually enjoyed building the Serratos. There's been some really cool stuff I was able to do with this ship that I haven't been able to do with other ones. Namely, uh, I think the shuttle bay on the Serratos is hands down my favorite shuttle bay that I've done so far. The room is just massive. And um, I'm hoping that I'll be able to do something equally as massive and awesome on the Enterprise D. Because Enterprise D has like three different shuttle bays. So that's something that I'm thinking about too. As you can see now what I'm doing, I'm getting my placement, making sure that these blocks I'm placing down the roof, they're matching where I have the ones in the floor, just like in the picture here. I could have done lighting, but I think the white concrete in the roof doesn't look bad. It really doesn't, but if you wanted to throw a light in there, you could.
but I didn't because it would have had to have been a sea lantern. And I don't think the sea lantern would have looked right. So that's honestly why I just went with the white and just call it a day. I got one more to do. All right. <clears throat> We're taking down, taking out these bottom ones here in a second, and just replacing them um, with the white. And you can see I changed the color, but and I tried to keep these in here. But like I said, that's just um, it's a different era, and this is one of the things you have to be conscious of when you're building ships on Minecraft, or at least I am anyway. You don't necessarily have to do it, but I think that's one of the reasons why my ship builds stand out because I have that attention to detail, and I'll spend time looking at pictures to get uh, inspired. Um, and it's those little details that really help to make everything come together. And, um, I mean, that right there, tell me that's not a next-generation transporter pad. I mean, that's pretty good. Not perfect, but it looks pretty good. So, all right, now that we got that done, we're going to just bring the rest of this room together. We're going to grab some white terracotta. And um, I think we're going to make the entryway point and in going into this room a little bit stronger. We're going to get rid of the white and dark gray on the sides and just do double terracotta on the sides. I think that'll look fine. And we'll do a row of terracotta on the bottom and then also the top. Just so we have a nice clear entryway point. So <clears throat> things that are left to do now, really, um, we just got to clean up the walls and put in the flooring. But, uh, you can always guarantee that you're always going to see a computer console in with the transporter room. So that's going to be very important that you're at least building the tran uh, the transporter console. So this way, whoever is operating it, obviously, you know, we're role playing at this point, but whoever is operating it, you know, they have something that they can interact with. Um, otherwise, you know, it doesn't feel as practical or, and it also doesn't look exactly like it did in the show. Um, so that's going to be something that we're going to be doing here. I'm starting off going just along the line of the room, along the corners with gray. Now I'm walking into this room here because I want to see how I did the floor. And I'm, I don't know if I want to do that same color palette. Um, the cyan and blue, but gray and blue I think could work really well. And just doing this just for the sake of not having the exact same thing. But I'm still bringing over those same design cues into this room. And that still is what's going to help bring this room together. Even though that we're not 100% matching the color palette for the floor, you can make the argument it's a different room. It's a transporter room. So it's just going to look a little bit different. But the overall feel, it should feel like the Serratos. And uh, the Serratos on the inside, it has a lot of grays and has a lot of blues, variations of those. Um, so if you do that, you can't really go wrong with it. Um, I mean, there's a couple of ways you can. Like if you did blue walls, for example, I think that wouldn't um, be on par. But there's a couple of things that, that we're going to do here to make this room pop just a little bit more. Uh, we'll include uh, some grid pixel blocks here later on to make them look a little bit more like working computer consoles. And I'm going to try it out <coughs> instead of using the cyan. Excuse me. I'm just going to try it out with the blue, maybe. And this is the Gemini in me coming out. I can never fully make up my mind. I'll throw something down, and then just for the sake of seeing a variation of it, I'll throw the variation down. And it's never a bad idea to do that, um, in all honesty, because, I mean, you might stumble across a really good idea just by trying different things, you know? So I'm just going up into the shuttle bay control room. I'm just looking at the walls and stuff, seeing kind of what I did here. Just trying to inspire me a little bit.
We're just going to fill in the whole roof with gray. Let's keep it simple right now. One thing that I have uh, had people uh, here and there asking me about is what I'm planning on doing after the Enterprise D. And um, <clears throat> I've had a couple uh, of suggestions, but um, I haven't had too many suggestions where I've had a lot of people asking for it. Uh, right now, believe it or not, I think the Defiant is probably my number one request after the Enterprise D. Um, so with that being said, that's not set in stone. Uh, still kind of waiting until I get towards the end of the Enterprise D before I'm going to decide what I'm going to do. Because I think I want to do things, I want to kind of go back to what I had going on before, um, at least when I did the Disco Air Enterprise. I want to focus on one build. Uh, not that I didn't get enough done with the Cerrado, so I feel that we've we've done everything that we need to do and uh, everything that I've I've gone over, the stuff that I'm planning on doing, it's probably everything everybody at least wants to see that there's left to see on it. But, uh, yeah, after that, I just want to focus on getting Enterprise D done and fully fleshing that ship out because there's a lot of cool stuff I'm going to be able to do with that interior that you're just not going to see on any other ship. And I'm going to wait to talk about it because some of it's outrageous, but it's practical. They did, uh, Some of the stuff they didn't uh, ever show but they designed it for the show, and um, I'm going to try to incorporate some of the stuff into my build. I found a great website that has a lot of uh, uh, really useful information on um, just the backstory of the Enterprise D and its uh, conception as far as uh, the interior goes. Because it's really, it's a different animal completely, uh, that ship. Because of the fact that it has families on board. So there's going to be so much stuff on the interior of that thing that you're just not going to see on any other Federation ship. And I'm going to take advantage of that, you know, um, because I like the fact that uh, my ship interiors, they're not all the same. If you compare the interior of the Cerritos to the interior of uh, the Disco Era Enterprise, they're almost completely different. Um, if you compare the two, the two Constitution classes that I uh, were actually the three that I have, uh, the 2009 Enterprise to the... Uh, Enterprise uh, A from Star Trek Beyond and then the Disco Era Enterprise. Um, the interiors on them definitely vary. Now, I will say that the Enterprise A and the 2009 Enterprise, they were actually a lot closer because it's technically the same ship, just refitted. But the Disco Era Enterprise the interior is completely different. I want to keep that going because I don't want to just build the same interior over and over again. As a builder on Minecraft, I want to keep challenging myself and trying new things. And uh, that's definitely one of the reasons why I'm going to be doing the Enterprise D. But, you know, um, I kind of got lost my train of thought there where I was going with this originally. But my main point I was trying to make is that, um, you know, drop those comments uh, as far as what ships you want to see me build. Uh, try to keep in mind I would like to stay with the next generation era for right now. Uh, just because I feel like I've learned a lot doing the Cerritos and I've learned a lot so far doing the Enterprise D. And uh, I think I'm going to learn a lot more doing the interior of that. And uh, I think it would be a shame to um, just throw all that away, to go back to uh, another era, at least for right now. Not saying that we're going to be staying in this era, but I want to do a couple more ships from next gen because I think there's a lot of really cool ships that we can, that, uh, that we can definitely build on here. And uh, I think they'll look pretty cool. Now we're just kind of getting some loose ends done here. Um, on our transporter room. We're kind of winding down. We're in the last four minutes. Shot by the first 22 already. Um, you can see I was kind of toying with the idea of doing half slabs along the roof there. I don't know how I feel about that. I might take those out. But um, we're just throwing in some consoles here. So it looks like you have a computer system that you can walk up here on the left, or excuse me, on the right. And then on the left there is where uh, the actual transport console would be. Yeah, so those half slabs, I'm not, I'm not really feeling that. I think we're end up taking that out here in a moment.
because I was thinking that I can do that and make the room look good, and sometimes it does. But um, I don't know why, but just for some reason, those half slabs in this uh, particular room, it just really it didn't look all that good to me. See, that looks a little bit better. Even though it's more of a square, um, that definitely looks better. I think maybe just for the floor here, might do like a gray. And since that uh, um, sea lantern's there, we're just going to grab some gray carpet. And fill all this in. So I could have even left what I had down there, but I just want there to be a transition of color, at least in the um, transporter control room. And then going across the uh, actual console here, we're going to swap that out for a different color as well. At least uh, as far as putting um, carpeting going across the half slabs, we'll do that in just a moment. I'm just kind of looking around, seeing if there's anything else that I want to, <clears throat> excuse me, that I want to change about this room. So I'm really happy with uh, with how this came out. I think uh, the transporter room looks pretty sweet, all things considered. Hit the screenshot button. That. So one thing I think is missing is that, like, I need like half slabs going along the border of where the transporter, the top of the pad meets the ceiling because they're the same height. I just cut out one row in between them and I did half slabs, so it looks like there's a transition there. I think that definitely looks better than how it did before. We are definitely pretty much done with this room. Not much left to do. I think the last thing we're going to do here is put the carpeting going along uh, this console here to make it look like it's a touchpad console. And what I'm just going to do is just black. And that looks pretty good. So we can't delete that wall there. We have to leave that. So we can definitely have that gray stripe there. I don't think that'll look bad on the sides. Kind of suits the room a little bit. And that's how you can make your own next generation teleporter pad. I don't know uh, when I do the Enterprise D if um, transporter room is going to look identical to this. I think there might be one or two tweaks that I make to it. But I think for a first attempt, all things considered, that looks pretty awesome, and I'm really happy with it. Anyway, I think that's going to wrap us up today. We've gotten a little bit of work done, but uh, there's still a couple more things to come this week. Um, we still have the cargo room, the shuttlecraft, or the shuttlecraft that we'll be uh, building, as well as the medical bay and the lounge, but then that's going to wrap this one up. So again, I'm no longer taking requests on interior rooms for the Cerritos. Anyway, that's going to wrap it up for me. I just want to thank everybody again for tuning in today's episode. If you did enjoy this content, please help me out. Hit that like and subscribe button in helping me in supporting the channel. I can't thank you enough for that. Also, new subscribers, don't forget to hit notifications on so you always get notified when those new videos drop. And speaking of new videos, you can always catch my new Starship Evo builds dropping on Mondays and my Minecraft videos dropping Tuesdays through Fridays. And those videos drop at 7 p.m. Eastern. Anyway, that's going to wrap it up for me. I just want to thank you all again for tuning in today's episode. I hope everybody has a happy and safe week, and I'll catch you on the next episode.